listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Hello and welcome to Six Figure Dog Business on PetLifeRadio.com. I'm your host, Ty Brown of SixFigureDogBusiness.com. Now, this is the show where we teach you how to start or grow your pet-related business to a healthy six-figure per year or more profit. In today's episode, I'm excited because you're going to be getting a double dose of business advice as I'm sitting down with the Parker Brothers. And no, I'm not referring to the board game Monopoly Parker Brothers. Instead, I'm going to be interviewing Stephen and Jason Parker, who have a franchise that you just may want to hear about. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Go to PetcoDeals.com and get $6 off your order of $60 or more and up to 40% off hundreds of items at Petco. PetcoDeals.com. But, but that's not all. Are you talking to me? Pet Life Radio listeners, try Audible.com now and get your first 30 days of Audible Listener Gold Membership Plan free. And get a free audiobook. Choose from over 100,000 titles. To get this great deal, go to AudibleDeals.com. Com. That's AudibleDeals.com. The new Dyson Animal Backs are powerful bagless upright backings for homes with pets. Air muscle and radio root cyclone technology generates the strongest suction power to powerfully remove dust, dirt, and pet hair from the home or car. Go to DysonDeals.com. DysonDeals.com. To order your Dyson Animal Back today. Go to PetSmartDeal.com and save up to 30% on awesome gifts for the pets and pet people in your life. Toys, collars, leashes, pet smart gift cards, treats, and more. Go to PetSmartDeal.com today. P-E-T-S-M-A-R-T-D-E-A-L.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Okay, and we're back, and like I mentioned, we're sitting down today with the Parker Brothers, Stephen and Jason. And so, first off, Stephen and Jason, thank you so much for being on the call today. Oh, you're very welcome. Glad to be here. Thanks for having us. So, I don't want to give your biography. You guys know what you've been doing better than anybody else. So, I've been looking at your website, and I'm super impressed with what's going on out there on the East Coast. And so, why don't you give us, uh, Stephen, why don't you let us know what's going on with your business, the name of your business, your website, who you are, and what you guys are doing. Absolutely. Thanks again for having us on. Uh, this is Stephen Parker, co-founder and chief executive officer of Canine Resorts Daycare and Luxury Hotel, www.canineresorts.com, the letter K, the number 9, resorts.com. We are a uh, an award-winning pet care facility. We just started franchising two years ago. We are uh, offering franchise opportunities from Boston down to Northern Virginia, and we provide pets with uh, dogs in particular with a five-star resort experience. We provide cage-free overnight boarding, meaning that dogs are housed in luxury suites with beds and TVs as opposed to a traditional cage or run. We provide a doggy daycare program, which allows dogs to socialize and interact and burn energy during the day. And we also provide premium bathing services. So clients are looking to have their dog come home uh, happy, fresh, and clean. Uh, We will give them a luxury dog bath before they depart. That's awesome. Now, Jason, let me ask you this because I was on your website and I was reading some of your story, and I was super impressed. You guys started your foray into the pet business when you were kids. Jason, can you tell us a little bit more about how you guys got started? Absolutely. My brother, Stephen, and I always wanted dogs growing up. And unfortunately, our parents are not dog people. They just didn't have dogs growing up when they were kids. 
and they didn't allow us to have a dog. So we tried to do everything that we could, make the honor roll, do our chores in order to get a dog, and it just didn't happen. So when Stephen and I were really young, I was 12, he was 14, we started watching our neighbor's pet when they would go away on vacation, making multiple visits to the home each and every day. And our neighbors realized that we were responsible young children, and we could be trusted to care for their pets long term when they were going away. So then we took that dream and we turned it into a dog walking business and uh, really did the business full time through high school and the beginning of Stephen's college years. And um, the business did very, very well. We were very successful. But we said, how can we take this business to the next level? So we opened up Canine Resorts Daycare and Luxury Hotel in Fanwood, New Jersey in January of 2005. And it was an immediate success. There had been nothing like it anywhere uh, in the state of New Jersey. We offer cage-free rooms, luxury suites, doggy daycare. Everything that we did was top of the line. Stephen and I traveled all around the country doing our research, hiring the best consultants, and uh, Canine Resorts was born in 2005. After that, we, um, we knew we, we wanted to grow again, and we started kicking around the idea of, of franchising versus having corporate stores, and we decided that franchising our model was the best way to do it because we knew that with the franchise location, there'd be a franchise owner at each site. Instead of going the corporate route where we'd have to hire managers and put a lot of our trust in running the facility in a manager, we could have a franchise owner on location at each facility. And Stephen and I love that approach. Now, we started franchising in 2011. Now it's 2013, and we have nine total units, seven in New Jersey, one in Pennsylvania, and one in Northern Virginia. And I'm proud to say that we are the youngest franchisors in America. Yeah, it's so, um, which I thought was awesome. So 2005, how old were you guys at the time? Believe it or not, I was actually still in high school. It was my senior year. So I was 17 or 18 and my brother was 20. <laughs> That's awesome. That's such a cool story. And so, like you mentioned, you've got all these franchise units that are now either going or about ready to go. And that's one thing that really called my attention when I hit your site and it said, okay, this one's opening up in spring of 2013, summer of 2013, fall of 2000, you know, just, you know, listed over and over and over all these new units opening up. I realized, man, these guys are doing something right with their marketing. So that's what I want to get into now and pick your brains a little bit and, uh, and figure out what you guys are doing so well with marketing that you're able to grow at this pace. So, Stephen, let me ask you, I know one thing that you guys do is billboard advertising. Now, most pet business owners are would be terrified of billboard advertising because of how expensive it is and, you know, the commitment that you have to make. And so let me ask you, Stephen, how did you get the guts to start billboard advertising and how have you made it into a success? Great question. We wanted to figure out how we could reach the most people possible, the largest audience and we're lucky enough to be on a major route, not us, but we found a billboard that was on a major highway that provided direct access to New York City. And a lot of residents in New Jersey that travel to New York for, for business or for work all travel along this route. So we figured it may be expensive to advertise, but there must be a reason that it's so expensive to advertise because it's hitting so many people per day. So as you mentioned, it is extremely expensive, but we said, you know, typically in life, the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward, let's try it. So we invested in a uh, large billboard that's right outside of New York City, and it was a tremendous success. We got clients from it. We got franchise inquiries from it. So we believe, you know, again, in life, that the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward, and Jason and I were more than happy to uh, roll the dice, so to speak, but we felt that it was a risk because the expense was a calculated risk. So um, since it was so successful, We've continued our advertising campaign, and now we have numerous billboards throughout central and northern Jersey. And that was actually my follow-up question. Let me ask this to you, Jason, then. So you guys have numerous billboard campaigns. Has that given you opportunity to test different ads? Have you figured out what kind of ad works on a billboard, what doesn't? What's your thoughts there, Jason? Yes, we definitely have refined our ads that we put up on the billboards. We feel that less is actually more. So the less information and the less wording that you put on the billboard is actually better. So we just have a big picture of two small terrier dogs, our logo, locations throughout New Jersey, and then what we do, boarding daycare franchises available. And uh, that really is, is easy because people have to be able to see what they're looking at, and they only have a second or two as they're traveling 
on a busy highway to get that message. So there, I see billboards out there all the time that are flooded with words. It looks like there's a paragraph put on there. That's not good, at least in my opinion, because it doesn't get your message out. People need to know within one, two, or three words what it is that you do. Exactly. You know, and I think you're right. I've seen these billboards where it looks like they're trying to sell their whole product you know, on the billboard when really they should just be selling people on calling a phone number or, or stopping by a location. You know, they don't need to sell the whole kit and caboodle, you know, from one billboard. So, Stephen, all of your new franchisees that come on board, do you ask them to budget that into their advertising expense that, hey, a billboard is going to give you this much of a return, so we really want you to do that? I mean, what do you do for new franchisees? Great question. We actually have two different options for our new franchisees. Basically, we have two different programs. We have a local advertising program, which is specifically geared towards the local franchisees market. And then we have a national advertising or regional advertising program. So with respect to the local program, the franchisee is in charge of that, and they will make the final decision. But obviously, they can always call us for our, not necessarily our approval, but for our advice on what has worked for us in the past. And we will obviously provide them with recommendations. And again, the franchisee is the ultimate decision maker in that process. Then Mm -hmm. they also contribute, every franchisee will contribute 1% of their sales to our national marketing campaign. And that's really what goes towards when you see billboards strategically positioned throughout the state, or you may see something in New Jersey Monthly Magazine or Star Ledger, which is the largest newspaper in our state, and it will advertise canine resorts, locations throughout New Jersey. Please visit caninesorts.com. That's something that all the franchisees contribute into a brand development fund, and then we spend those proceeds on behalf of the brand to obtain advertising and to obtain brand awareness for the brand as a whole. And let me just butt in. So we basically do have those two funds where one, the local, the franchisee has control over, and then the more regional, larger funds that everyone contributes to, Stephen and I manage, and you'll see a lot of the larger publications. That's when we use that larger brand development fund. But we do have a marketing company that we work with that puts together a whole plan and package for each franchisee. We try to make the whole process as turnkey as possible. Possible. So when someone buys the business, they're really not doing anything on their own. They're in business, you know, they're in business for themselves, but not by themselves. They're getting mm-hmm. the support, the help, and the direction from us on the corporate end. So let me ask you then, uh, Jason. You know, uh, for the small business owner who's listening to this program right now, is billboard advertising going to be cost prohibitive for everyone? I mean, you guys obviously know because you've got various billboards around. Now I'm sure prices are going to vary around the country, but you know, on an entry level, what is someone going to be looking to pay to get into billboard advertising? It can be as low, believe it or not, as $400 uh, per billboard for a 30-day period to as high that I've seen it as about $5,500 per board. And again, a lot of different factors, $5,500 you know, per board, a lot of different factors will go into that. It's going to depend on the size of the board, so they have different sizes, whether you get a standard size, a large size, or an extra large size, the type of road, the traffic count the city, all of those factors are going to depend on, are going to make the variation there. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Well, let's move on then because um, I want to get into talking more about some referral programs or, or getting referrals essentially. So, Stephen, let me direct this at you. I know you guys have been successful in referrals. Now, a lot of people listening to this program, a lot of people looking to get into business know that referrals are or can be the lifeblood of a company, but a lot of people think, okay, if I do a good job, I'll get referrals and they leave it at that. But, you know, I found over the years I don't think that's the case. And so let me ask, what do you guys do referral-wise? How do you get referrals? How do you make sure that you're getting a steady stream of them? What's your referral program, Stephen? Yes, you have to really reward someone. I agree that, you know, some people, a lot of people think, oh, if I just do a good job, then I will, the referrals will come. That's not necessarily the case. There's a couple of factors that I think have really worked well for us with our referral programs. First of all, we have two different types of referral programs. We have a store referral program, and what I mean by that is if you are a satisfied customer of K9 Resorts and you refer your friend to K9 Resorts, you will get a referral credit, $15 credit, $20 credit, $25 credit, depending on the store. Some stores will even say, we'll give you a $25 credit and your friend a $25 credit. So that works really well. The second referral program that we have is our franchise referral credit. 
And what that is, is if you refer someone to Canine Resorts Franchising and they wind up purchasing a franchise from us, we will give you a check for $5,000 or a brand new Rolex watch. Your choice. Wow. Well. <laughs> and so far, we have awarded uh, $10,000 in uh, franchise referral uh, checks, and we're happy to do so. And, and these people were either friends or family or, or uh, associates of ours that were familiar with Jason and I and familiar with Canine Resorts and felt that they knew someone that would benefit from becoming a Canine Resorts franchise owner. They made the referral, and we, again, awarded uh, $10,000 just last year alone. Now, you see, I love that because so many times in business, so many business owners are looking at these things as like an expense. Oh, you had to pay $10,000, but look at what you're getting in return. You're getting two new franchises from that, which is going to be, you know, recurring revenue for you. Now, on a lower level, you know, on, on your store level where you're giving a $10 credit, a $20 credit, you know, again, a lot of business owners say, oh, that's an expense. I can't afford to lose $20, you know, every time I, I get a referral or something like that. But in reality, Look at the lifetime value of that person coming in. Yeah, you gave up twenty dollars to get that new client, but you know what if they do two vacations a year and and twenty daycares or something like that? I mean, that's way more valuable. Jason, let me uh, get a little bit more of the nuts and bolts on that from you. How do you manage that? I mean, because I think a lot of people will hear that and they would say, "Okay, I'm willing to give out a referral fee," but how do you manage it so that it's tracked well, so that the person actually gets it, so the person actually knows that it's a referral, so that your receptionist knows that I'm supposed to be assigning this to this person? How do you do that? Well, in our business, it's very easy. We do have the systems in place to handle that. We have a proprietary software that we use that manages uh, our entire business. So, for example, everything from when the client calls and makes a reservation, to when we check availability, when we actually make that reservation, that invoice, all of that information is kept on a, on a software system that we use. And there is a spot on the individual client profile that says referral source. So we just type in that, you know, that referral source, whether it's a client or the billboard ad, or so we can track if our advertising is working. We type it in that referral source. If it happens to be a, a name of a client, we type that client's name in, and then we immediately open up that client's profile in the appropriate place, give them their credit, and then just pick up the phone and say, hello, Mrs. Smith, thank you so much for referring Mrs. Jones. As a way of saying thank you, as you know, we've placed a $25 credit on your account. So on our system, we make it nice and easy. That's beautiful because so many businesses make it so difficult to get your referral credit that you know the person has to come in with this specific coupon, with this specific code, and then you get your referral credit. But that's brilliant. You guys are actually seeking to give these referral credits out. Is that what you're telling me? You're 100% right, and it, it is an investment. We don't look at it as an expense. We look at it as an investment, and if you actually look at what the cost is of that 20 or $25 gift certificate to gain a new client, and you compare it to the cost, the high cost of advertising, like we were just talking about, whether it's billboard or magazine or newspaper or whatever advertising, it is the most inexpensive form of advertising out there. So, well, let me get some, uh, Stephen, let me ask you maybe to, uh, to elaborate a little bit on that for us. And so, uh, and maybe I'm putting you on the spot, maybe you don't have all this data at your hands, but have you ever tracked, okay, uh, a billboard, um, you know, through billboard advertising, it costs us X amount of dollars to get a new client through referral, it costs X amount of dollars. Do you guys have that data on hand? You know, it, it's a very good question. I don't have it off the top of my head. I know that we do have the data, but I don't have it off the top of my head. But I do know that it is significantly more expensive, whether it's a billboard advertising or radio advertising. I would say it's several hundred dollars per client. Typically, we spend several thousands of dollars on each ad that we do, and we typically get anywhere from one client to 20 clients, depending on the success of the campaign. With the referral program, it's only costing us $20, but I don't look at it as an expense of $20. I look at that as an investment into our brand. You know, the takeaway that I want people listening to this to get from that is, you know, because when people are out there and they're saying, I need new business and I need new business now, they often, you know, the first thing they think of is, where can I put an ad? When in reality, what you're telling us is, yeah, ads are fine. Ads work for us, but much cheaper, much more effective is going through our happy customer bases. Am I correct in assuming that? 
That is correct. And look at it this way. You have to take your customers, especially if they're happy. And if you're doing the right thing, they should be happy customers. And you have to make them advocates for your business. Let them go out there on social media. Social media is huge. I could probably spend an hour talking about social media. But, you know, make those clients go out there and uh, really talk about your business, show their excitement and enthusiasm and say, hey, my dog goes to Canine Resorts. He loves it. Every time he comes home from doggy daycare, he smells good. He's happy. He's been well exercised. He's in good shape. Uh, if you look at the cost of the referral program, the way that we do it, compared to a standard advertisement, it is about um, four to ten times more expensive to do an advertisement and to gain each customer when you do an ad versus our referral program. And you know at the end of the day with the referral program, you're only paying it out if someone's making a reservation. So it's not like you're just paying a referral fee out for someone to talk about your business. It's when you gain more business, that's when you're paying a portion of it out to the referring party. You know, that is excellent information. And for those listening, I hope you're taking notes there because that, you know, just that little piece of information makes this whole half hour worth it for you. If you can just realize how much cheaper it is to use referral programs than it is uh, any sort of, uh, you know, standard or traditional advertising. So now you mentioned internet and I want to get into that here in a second, but we're going to take a quick break. But I've been on your site and I've seen your intellectual properties and you guys are doing a great thing online. And so I'm going to pick your brain coming back on what our business owners here can do to increase their internet presence. So stay with us, folks. We'll be right back. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Hi, this is Tim Link, animal communicator and pet expert and host of Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Have you ever wanted to know what your pet is really thinking? Do you want to find out if they truly understand what you're trying to tell them? Ever wish you could build a better understanding and closer relationship with your pet? Well, now you can. Learning to communicate with animals is a four-part on-demand workshop. In the workshop, you'll learn the essential techniques that are necessary to communicate with animals, including what is animal communication, breathing correctly to achieve the perfect state to communicate with your animals at a deeper level, using guided meditation exercises and method to communicate with animals, and how to send and receive information from your animals. So if you're wanting to learn how to communicate and connect with your animals at a deeper level, visit PetLifeRadio.com forward slash workshop and purchase and download Learning to Communicate with Animals. You'll be glad you did. Love My Pets, the new single by Mark Winter, available on iTunes. Attention passengers, please fasten your seatbelts, put your seat bags and sleeping pets in their full upright position, and prepare for takeoff. Pet Life Radio presents Travel Tales, the show where you'll get great travel ideas on perfect places for you and your pet. From Paris to paradise, south of the border to the South Seas, Travel Tales will give you cool tips on fun vacation destinations to travel with your pet, pet friendly hotels, and advice on how to travel safely and happily with your furry best friends. So, get ready to pack the bags and the bones with your Travel Tales hosts, Susan Sims and Nicholas Veslowski, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Okay, and we're back, and we're talking with the Parker Brothers, and they have been giving us some amazing information about billboard advertising, referral programs. Folks, these are things that I'm not seeing them being done in too many pet businesses out there, you know, as far as billboards and referral programs. So again, I hope you're taking notes because this is marketing gold right here. I want to get into some internet marketing because I know that you guys, you know, excel at doing some internet marketing. And so, Stephen, in a nutshell here, I know this is a lot to put into a nutshell. Like one of you mentioned earlier, you could talk an hour on this. In a nutshell, what is your internet strategy? 
Well, we have a couple different strategies uh, with respect to our internet marketing program. Number one, obviously, it has to be wherever the client winds up ending up on whatever page they're landing on, it has to be informative. It has to grab their attention. I think there's a couple different strategies that we use. We use the Google AdWords, which is the pay-per-click. We use search engine optimization. We want to make sure that we're very high in the natural Google rankings. So that's obviously the first component. But then once the client, as I mentioned, lands on that page, on your home page, you want to make sure that you're providing them with a couple different pieces of information. One, what is it exactly that you do? Two, why should they do business with you? Why is your service superior than your competitors? And three, what is your pricing, what are your hours, what is your location, and how you are convenient for that customer. So for example, uh, you'll find on our site somewhere it'll state conveniently located less than 20 miles from Newark Airport. The reason we put that on there is because Newark Airport is an international airport that's less than 20 miles away from our store, and a lot of our clients are traveling to go on vacation. We want to let them know that we're on the way to the airport, so when you're going to the airport, you can drop off your dog at Canine Resorts. So you want to make sure two things. Again, one, that you are appearing in the searches when a client or a potential client searches for you, and two, once they land on your page, they immediately know what you do, why you're the best at what you do, and why you're considered an expert in your field. So we uh, are proud to be uh, rated number one in New Jersey for the past four years by New Jersey Monthly Magazine, by the Courier News. We've been featured in local, statewide, and, and national press. So we display all that information on our website so clients know that we are, in fact, the real deal. So just to reiterate, because you said three things that, um, that are super important. If someone lands on any one of your pages, any one of your pages, your about page, your, your services page, whatever, they should see what you do, why you're better, or why people should be working with you, and three, the nuts and bolts, I guess I would call it, the convenience, you know, your hours, pricing, stuff like that. Am I correct? Am I summing those things up correctly, those three things? Yes, what I was referring to is the home page, and then one mistake I think a lot of businesses make, and we may even be guilty of this, is to not list your phone number and your contact info on every single page. So I think that's important to be on every page, but I think on the home page, you have to immediately grab their attention and again say who you are, what you do, and why they should do business with you. Two more things that should be on every person's web page, so get your pens out, is a spot for the client to put their email address so they can receive monthly newsletters, and also a quick contact form that has just, keep it simple, name, phone number, email address, that should be on every page. You know, uh, that's a great point. And one thing I always preach to a lot of my students is get that information, get that email address, because what happens if you find yourself in a down month? Well, if you're in a down month and you've got a list of a thousand email addresses, maybe you shoot out a special or a promotion. And I mean, that's just one reason for maintaining a list of people. But, you know, as the marketers that I always study say, you know, the money is in the list. You know, we should always be creating a list of prospects of consumers, et cetera. Correct. Exactly. And then you have a drip campaign so that you give that monthly newsletter. You have content going out there every month. I think it's important. You don't want to overdo it with the contact of the client, even on email. People think today, oh, it's an email address. I can bombard them with their with all these promotions and newsletters and all these different things, and I can send something out every other day or every week. If you do it too much, the only thing people are going to do is unsubscribe. I know that. That's what I do personally when I get too much email from one particular vendor is I just quit quickly unsubscribe and the way it is right now with a lot of the programs that you have to use to do these email campaigns is you need to get the client's permission a lot of times in order mm -hmm. to sign them up for that monthly email or any type of communication that you're going to have or the service provider, the uh, company that's actually sending out that email won't send it out. And if you do get too many complaints, then you get red flagged and shut down as well and then you have to prove to that company that you actually do have the permission of each and every client to send out this information. So it's a very touchy situation. You want to make sure that you're doing it the right way. And if you have any questions, contact a local marketing company. They can definitely help you. Mm -hmm. Well, Jason, I think it was you that said that you could talk about social media for an hour. And, and I want to finish up on that topic. We're getting close to the uh, the end of our interview here. And I want to finish up on that because you're talking about some great stuff with, you know, make sure that we're, we're dripping content to them. You know, we're monthly newsletter or informative stuff. Does that then transfer over to your social media strategy? I mean, what kind of stuff are you putting out there in, in your social media platforms? 
Sure, absolutely. Everything's really tied in together. So at Canine Resorts, we do put out a monthly newsletter. It's the same newsletter. It goes out to all the stores, so it, it touches on what an individual store is doing in terms of a promotion or stuff like that. Also, we're very involved in the community, so if any franchise owner is involved in their local community, we encourage it, and we talk about it and highlight it on our newsletter. For example, here in New Jersey, in Scotch Plains, Stephen and I are involved in the Rotary Wolf Walk. It, uh, it's the third year that we're helping put this event together, and it's basically a walk all around town, about a mile and a half uh, walk to benefit local charities that uh, the, the Rotary is putting together along with our help. And uh, we talk about that. So we mention the fact that this Wolf Walk is taking place. For more information, visit this website. We always put the link out there. That's important stuff. So everything's kind of tied in together. We advertise it then on the social media, on Facebook and Twitter. And there's always fresh content. That's the, the number one thing with social media is you have to have fresh content on there. If you let stuff sit on your page for for too long, it, it's not good. You have to keep everybody engaged. And in this day and age, when everybody has a smartphone or a tablet that they're walking around with, it's not even one post per day. That's not even fresh content. Every couple hours, you have to put stuff on there. Pictures work out really well for social media, Facebook. So you can put different pictures on there with captions like this. If your dog has done something like that, and it's a picture of a dog shredding the couch, you know, different contests that we do on social media, best dressed pet. You got to get your consumer engaged and interacting with you and, uh, and offer prizes. So every time we do a contest, we give $150, $200, Visa gift card to the winner of that contest. You got to keep people involved and excited, and uh, it's been working really well. Awesome. Gentlemen, thank you so much for this episode. Like I say, you guys are doing some stuff that isn't really being done in our industry. When I say our industry, I'm talking about pets. You know, there's not a lot of people doing some of these strategies that you guys are talking about. So for those listening, whether you've got a big business or a small business, I'm hoping that you've been taking notes and figuring out how you can apply some of these things that are being proven to have success and apply them to your businesses. Now, Stephen, for those that are either wanting to A, board their dog, you know, send their dog to one of your resorts or B, perhaps maybe open one of your resorts in their area, how can they get in touch with you guys? Absolutely. We can, uh, they can visit our website, www.k9resorts, the letter K, the number 9, resorts.com, or they can give us a call at 908-889-PETS. That's 908-889-7387. I will extend a special discount. I will double our normal offer to a $50 discount for anyone who calls to make a boarding reservation of three nights or greater. If they mention they heard us on your show, we'll take $50 off their first bill. Excellent. And for those that may want to open up a franchise, how can they get in touch with you guys? The same way. They can visit either K9Resorts.com or K9 Franchise, the letter K, the number 9, Franchise.com, or give us a call again at 908-889-7387. Awesome. Well, listeners, thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to come back to PetLifeRadio.com and click on Six Figure Dog Business to hear all of our business building episodes. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you soon. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.